Hey guys and welcome back to another one of my Cloak and Dagger videos in my review of Blue Note. Blue Note is the ninth episode of the second season of the series. Alright, so it makes perfect sense that this week's episode is quite low on Easter eggs. I mean, it's not completely void of them, but nonetheless, it's quite low on Easter eggs considering what last week's episode was like. It was crazy on Easter eggs. There was of course the one that got us all super excited, I mean all of these series usually make references to the movies, that side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but instead of doing so, Cloak & Dagger decided to do otherwise, they decided to reference the TV side, and not just the TV side, the TV side that used to be on Netflix. They did give us as well a two-in-one combo, they gave us the Luke Cage picture on the front page of a newspaper, his name on the front page of a newspaper, and the article is written by none other than Karen Page. Now this is not the only one this season, this is actually the second reference following the reference to Ben Urich early on this season. Now I don't remember what the reference exactly was over here, but I remember that last season, like on the premiere of the series, we did get a reference to Luke Cage as well. So yeah, very heavy on references to the Netflix side. But moving on though, another easter egg to the early run of Cloak & Dagger in the comics, they never really tried to regulate the drug market like Tyrone does over here, but they did indeed hunt drug dealers, drug traffickers, they were trying to make sure to stop them, especially after what happened to them, because they did get their powers in the comics through experimental drugs. Now it is interesting how Tyrone is doing this after Tandy has been repeatedly drugged by none other than Despair, Kind of feels like a strong reference to the comic book origin that they have. I mean, they did exactly that, you know, hunt drug dealers and whatnot right after they got drugged and got their powers. So, yeah, feels like a perfect parallel. Feels like a perfect parallel as well after they played that game last week. You know, the game that gives us an origin to Tyrone and Tandy that's extremely different than the origin that they've got on the series, but nonetheless very similar to the origin of them and their powers on the pages of the comics. So yeah, all of that was pretty solid, pretty good, we're getting a Tyrone in action, a lot of people have been looking forward to this, a lot of people have been complaining that, you know, they're not as powerful as we want them to be on the series. A lot of people keep forgetting that these two are kind of still figuring things out and with time they do start figuring more and more out and with time they start getting more powerful, start understanding their powers better and using them better. Now on this episode we've also got the Retching Pigs drawing our poster that reads the Retching Pigs with a pig drawn in the middle in the center of it and I believe that's a reference to the Retching Pigs on the pages of the comics, on the pages of the Runaways comics to be more precise. But it isn't just easy to make this kind of connection because we've got a Runaways TV series, you know, the one that airs on Hulu and whatnot. But it's actually a lot easier because this is not just a reference to the Retching Pigs, but also a reference to the membership of Tyrone and Tandy, Cloak and Dagger, and the Runaways team up at some point during their run in the comics. Now the Retching Pigs, and in case you were looking, made their debut on the pages of the comics on issue number 7 of volume number 3 of Runaways. Now the title of this issue was Rock Zombies Part 1, part of a three issue arc with the same title. Issue number 7 was Rock Zombies Part 1, issue number 8 was Rock Zombies Part 2, and issue number 9 was Rock Zombies Conclusion. But the thing here is that we're talking zombies, once again, talking zombies. There has been a lot of zombie talk, a lot of zombie hints, a lot of easter eggs towards zombies in the comics on last week's episode and I did talk about it on last week's video, so you can check that out if you did miss it. But yeah though, this kind of poster, this kind of reference does continue that kind of theme going into this episode. On another note though, behind Andre in one of the flashbacks in the clinic, there is this label drawing of Honest Abe. Now this is probably a reference to exactly that in the comics, however though, I'm not sure if it is of any significance when it comes to the general storyline of this season or the specific storyline of this episode, so if you've got anything, let me know in the comments down below. Now before I move on to discussing the core events of the episode away from easter eggs and whatnot, let's not forget our weekly nod to none other than Roxanne. But okay, let's talk the events of the episode. So first and foremost, we get an origin story for Andre Deshawn, and the origin story does tell us that he had the migraines even before the old rig explosion. So for Andre over here, discovering his powers, using them, becoming despair. That was a solution brought about by the old rig explosion to a pre-existing problem, not a problem created by the explosion as well. 
Now, when looking at Deshaun and Leah in flashbacks, there is something worth noticing over here. Deshaun was always the same person. He was always so ambitious, which by the way is a good thing, but that ambition came with greed. That's the bad part about it. He was talented, but he wanted to go for the blue note right away. He didn't care how that affected his people, his group, the group he played with. For him, it was all about, you know, growing in magnitude, becoming a god, and that's what he says at the beginning of the episode, and that's what is reflected at the end of the episode. On the other hand, with Leah Dewan, she was a completely different person, a hopeful person. As a child, she was hopeful. As she grew up into a career in the medical field, she was not as hopeful. I mean, the one thing that she wanted the most, her music, that was taken away from her by her parents' dreams, or her father's dreams to be precise, to see her become a doctor. So a good person, a kind person, a person willing to sacrifice for the people that she loves. I do love though how the series kind of built it in such a way that Andre preyed on her, found a way to her heart, sucked her hope, and lived on her despair, because they had this one thing in common. And it wasn't that they both lost something that they cared about, it's that they both lost the same thing that they cared about, which was basically their music. But the difference though between Andre Deshaun on one hand and Leah Dewan on the other hand is that Deshaun was actually willing to become this person, he was ambitious with greed. But Leah though, he had to use his powers bestowed upon him by the oil rig explosion in order to be able to make her this person. It was interesting on this episode how the words we heard on the trailer, you know, about becoming a god, climbing that mountain, were not actually about him walking through that door, but was about a blue note like 96 months ago. Now even though the statement was originally made 96 months ago, when they meet up, all of them in Leah Dewan's mind, when he talks to Tyrone and Tandy about a blue note, what separates man from God, that is basically the TV series telling you to recall every word he said at the very beginning of the episode, you know, about being a god or becoming a god or climbing that mountain. But we've got Andre's plan, sacrificing more people, feeding on the despair of more people, playing the blue note that would basically unlock the door for him, for him to walk through and become a god. Now at the end of last week's episode, we did see that something was wrong with Melissa Bowen, you know, Tandy's mother, and I didn't want to comment on it on my video. A lot of people were wondering why I didn't comment about it. The truth is, I don't really know what to say. Did she commit suicide? Did she not commit suicide? Did she overdose? Did she not overdose? What happened to her? Is she alive? Is she not alive? All of those were big and major questions, but it wasn't clear, and I would have made a fool out of myself trying to theorize over them. On this episode, though, we get to understand what Andre's been doing. He's been prepping all of these women. He's been making sure that they are ready for when he plays that big blue note, the one that gets him through because he needs a huge followership, a huge audience, and this huge audience is what's gonna get him to pass through. However though, all of these people would end up vanishing as soon as he's done with his note, as soon as that door unlocks. And that's what happens on this episode, feels a little bit inspired as well by Avengers Infinity War. So Andre's blue note over here is basically the snap of Thanos, and the disappearance, the vanishing of all of these people as soon as he was done, as soon as he unlocked that door, that was basically the decimation. Now, by the end of the episode, there's still music playing out there, Tyrone and Tandy can still hear it, and that's basically all about what we watch on the trailer for next week's episode. I'm debating, by the way, posting a full trailer breakdown, but just in case I don't, I don't think the passing through the door as him becoming a Loa, as him becoming a god, I believe that's all about him walking into the ceremony. The ceremony is where he ascends. That's all about the ascension to becoming a Loa or becoming a god. Now, as long as that ceremony is still ongoing, as long as he hasn't ascended yet into becoming a Loa, that music in the city is gonna still play, more people are still gonna disappear, and that's once again according to next week's trailer, and that means that stopping him right now is not about reversing what happened, it's also about stopping it from happening to more people, avoiding more people getting, well, decimated. But all in all though, it was a decent episode. On any other given day, I might have given it a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10, but I'm saying here a 7 out of 10 is more than enough. It comes after a great episode, the best the series has given us so far, that being last week's episode, and even though a very good explainer, not a filler at all, it doesn't have the potential to be anything close to the greatness of last week's episode. 
So yeah, when put in comparison with its immediate predecessor, it feels like a little bit of a letdown, even though it did advance the events quite well. With that being said though, my work here is done, so let me know if you do want me to post that kind of finale breakdown or trailer breakdown video. Let me know as well if you did like this episode, if there are any specific parts of this episode that you liked more than any other, and if there are any easter eggs that I might have missed on this video. Let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, subscribing to this channel and make sure while you're at it to enable notifications in order to get updates whenever I upload a video, publish a new community post or start a new live stream. But until the next time that you tune in for another one of my videos, cloak and dagger or otherwise, thank you so much for tuning into this video and have a great day.